Hello. Hello. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Hello. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm just um, preparing the lecture today. I'm hoping that you will log on, um, the various students in CT1100, so bear with me. received emails at this stage. Okay, I noticed that students are beginning to log on, so that's great. Um, I hope you can all see this. The lecture will start as normal at 10 o'clock, so I'm just preparing it, and uh, here we are. Okay, and I'll set the Blackboard registration going shortly. Okay, and by the way, just to say to students that if you... Um, oh, hang on. I've moved down. Um, I, I've got to move the slideshow back to the start here. I'll be putting in the registration number shortly. Oh, just checking that I've spelt everything okay. And just if um, you know of anybody who um, may be online, by the way, just, uh, or sorry, not getting this, you might remind your colleagues, um, you know, also to log on to the lecture um, by social media if you could, because obviously um, we're in a very strange situation at the moment where we're having online lectures from people's houses and so on and we're all hopefully safe at home now at this stage without any um, problems in relation to um, COVID-19 or whatever it's called um, and obviously people have been listening to the radio and television but from the point of view of this particular course CT1100 we're going to carry on absolutely as planned it'll just be a slightly different format so instead of sitting in the Fotrell Theatre today, we'll be sitting at home or sitting in our in safe places away from, um, I suppose, too much social contact, which is a shame, but it's um, what we have to do for the few weeks ahead, unfortunately. Um, but there's no reason we can't just carry on um, pretty much as normal and looking forward to giving the remaining lectures and doing the remaining tests and we'll get to the lecture proper in a minute. Just to mention as well, actually, in case um, you're interested, if you the the YouTube video which you're watching effectively, um, if you want to leave comments in that, and I'd be grateful for comments just to show that you're actually um, 
sort of hearing what I'm saying um, or giving feedback in relation to whether this works for you or whether it doesn't work for you. I'd appreciate if you did give comments in the comment section of the video. And what I'll do from time to time is I'll stop uh, the lecture, you know, I'll stop the formal part of the lecture, have a look at the comments. And if there are any comments um, online, um, please, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to them. So if anybody would like to make a comment now, I'd be very grateful. Just say hello or something. Okay, and we'll start the lecture shortly, about one minute to go. Oh, I can see a better attendance than normal, so that's absolutely wonderful. Um, delighted, delighted with that. So, um, okay. I'm about to start the blackboard. Okay, the number for attendance is 4387. I'll just put that on the screen now. 4387. Um, okay, there we go. I hope you can see that. 4387. And I'll just check that's correct. 4387, yes. So that's open for another half an hour, so only people who are actually attending the lecture will be able to submit attendance. Um, people will be able to watch the lecture back, um, we'll leave it online afterwards, and I've had one or two requests in that regard, because some people have um, difficult situations. So anyway, the lecture is formally started, and let's go. Um, Okay, and you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty at this because I'm not um, that familiar with uh, these online lectures. But anyway, this is lecture number 21 and it's on local area networks and it's a communications lecture. So we've already covered um, most of the course. Obviously, semester one um, was 50% of the course and we're now well through the um, second part of it. So hopefully we'll all get very safe and soundly through um, this part of the course, semester two, and on this Wednesday we'll have um, a multi-choice question uh, test, and it basically we'll have three attempts to do it. It'll run as normal during the lab period of time, and um, we'll give you two hours extra to um, cope with the, I suppose, slightly unusual situation we find ourselves in. Um, so you'll get a total of three attempts to, to do this, and uh, it'll be on the following lectures. It'll be on lectures 16, 17 and 18. So here we are at Lab 8, week 10. Um, so looking forward to um, looking at your multi-choice question um, answers. OK, so today's lecture is about local area networks. And you'll all be familiar with local area networks, I hope, to some extent or another. And what a local area network is, it's a computer network with a, within a small geographical area, such as a home, a school, a computer laboratory, an office, a building or a group of buildings or we might for example have a local area network um you know in in the it section of um the university for example so a lan is composed of interconnected workstations and personal computers usually which are each capable of accessing and sharing and uh, devices such as printers scanners and data storage so it's basically a local network um which allows us to sort of share devices and connect to each other so they're used for information and resource sharing. Uh, they require communication between a variety of different devices. So as we talked about things like printers and scanners, um, and obviously there would tend to be a server um, on, the, on each network to control it. And they enable device and data sharing. Now in the good old days, you, you would have, um, you know, for example, a local email, um, you know, basically running from a, a local area network. 
uh, but that would be just purely to your work colleagues. Nowadays, email is very much sort of a, an internet-based thing. So reduction in software purchase is one thing that it allows because it allows people to share software across the network. Um, it's a transparent infer interface to shared resources and it has potential access to other networks such as WANs and obviously wide area networks that is and also obviously nowadays the internet. So they can improve speed and reliability of data transfer and they very much minimize the risk of security. So of course you can have a local area network without it necessarily be connect being connected to any other network and this actually can be quite commonly the case in high security areas for example because simply it's impossible to hack into something um, if, if you simply can't get access to it. So if we have a look at the architecture um, we'd have for example a number of different printers dedicate on a dedicated print server we'd have um, microcomputers all connected up to a local area network and each um, each computer which is connected to the network would be able to um, print out through the print server for example. So a communication network is used by a single organization over a limited distance. So for example in the in the um, you know computer labs and so on we have um, network capabilities. It requires individual terminals to be linked by cabling or wireless link and two types, two main types dedicated and peer-to-peer. -peer. So they require generally a dedicated server. One or more computers is permanently assigned to being the network server. It is possible to have uh, you know, a computer which is both a server and a workstation, but generally it, it would be a server. So they're a very powerful micro mini computer usually. So 90% of all LANs are of this type and may have specific functions, files, database, prints, comms, servers. You can have a large cluster of servers as well a server farm that's that's possible so the two different types as we said peer-to-peer -peer, all computers run software that enables them to function as both um, a client and as a server and it's a lower cost but less capability than dedicated support uh, sorry than, than a dedicated one and support a limited number of computers provide less sophisticated software and can prove more difficult to manage so dedicated server local area networks the server's usually usual operating system is replaced by a network operating system. And examples, um, for example, would be Novell. Um, I, I did some work for Novell once upon a time, an interesting company. So that, that would have been very well known in the past. Windows Server 2016. Um, so with Linux, we have Red Hat and Cent operating system. So a dedicated server uh, local area network enables software sharing. Local area network soft, software licenses are a common way of uh, companies um, providing local area networks. So purchase of software on, on a per, set, uh, per seat basis, for example. Um, so a single piece of software can be provided, but um, depending on the number of people who actually use it on the network. And installation software once on a server for all to use. So, you know, there would be examples, you might have um, X number of licenses sold um, for a specific network by a company who provides software. That would be a typical way of um, selling certain types of software. Okay, so components of a LAN, um, servers, client workstations, network interface cards, um, network cables, hubs and connectors, and other hardware such as workstations, a printer, and backup devices, which are very, very important in LANs, as I know from the past. Certainly when you're working in a, an accounts office, um, backup devices can be absolutely crucial because all the work um, of, of lots of people over a month can be lost. I've, I've had unfortunate experiences in that regard. So backups are very important. And I would have used a sort of grandfather, father, son method in the past where, um, you know, uh, basically you'd, you'd keep um, copies of the, the various backups until they were no longer needed. Um, okay, so that's an example of a network, a hub, and it's connected by a cable to a network server and then um, the client computer. So the client computer is obviously the bit that we would use and it's very important. Um, servers generally are more powerful machines 
and that makes sense. They'd be more powerful machines than the basic workstations. Um, the required services provided by a server allow terminals to be attached to a LAN. They enable file database printer terminal modem fax and remote access. Uh, they provide users with access to data, programs and other files. So the location of data should be transparent to the user. So the client machines, which are basically the workstations, are rarely homogenous. There's different levels of technology can cause problems, though. Uh, for example, if you know, in, certainly in the past, it's a lot more transparent these days, and software is much more sophisticated. But there's always problems between operating systems, and examples would be sort of standard um, Windows and Apple um, machines. So the different software versions. Um, of operating system are also sort of uh, something that can cause problems but there's always solutions to these and a good um, network manager will always sort those out. So diskless workstations there's no local drive and um, the, the operating system boot logic in read-only memory includes logic to connect the network and download operating systems so these are obviously cheaper and they have no storage space. So we're just talking about machines which basically sit on, on a, a network, but they're not actually got any processing capacity themselves. So they're quite secure as a user cannot copy to or from local drives, so cannot introduce um, their own software. So there's literally no storage devices on such machines. They just connect with the uh, central server. Now that that is actually something that was more common in the past, but in certain industries and so on, it would, or certain, um, you know, certain types of business, it's actually useful to do things in such a way that people don't have any access to the um, directly to the server except through the terminal. So, local area network adapters, um, network interface cards. That's what one looks like. They're is installed in each workstation and server, and they provide a connection between medium and bus workstations. Um, they include unique data link layer, it's the MAC address. So network cables are used to connect a computer physically to the network. Um, types of cable, unshielded twisted pair, UTP leading LAN cable, um, and shielded twisted pair, optical fiber, high capacity, but they're more expensive. I'm just going to take a little break from this at the moment to see if there's any comments made. Um, so bear with me a second. Um, no comments yet, so if anybody wants to leave a comment, they're more than welcome. Um, okay, so I'll go back, go back to the lecture. Sorry, bear with me, this is a slightly unusual process for me. Okay, so hubs and switches, that's what a hub um, looks like, and they act as a junction box linking cables from several computers on a network. So you'll be familiar enough with these, I presume, many of you. Uh, they're usually sold with 4, 8, 16 or 24 ports and anybody who sort of works in a sort of binary world will recognize all those numbers. They're all d sort of divisors of 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. So they may allow a connection of more than one kind of cabling such as UTP or coax, coax cable. So they repeat, reconstruct and strengthen incoming signals and they're very important since all signals become weaker with distance and that's an important thing to remember in, in a LAN and in general in terms of computing that signals do become weaker with distance so I hope you're all hearing me for example because hopefully this Wi-Fi signal is getting to you in good order I think I have good enough Wi-Fi and I hope all of you do I know one or two had problems um, so it extends to the maximum lag LAN segment distance sorry getting my G's and N's mixed up there and um, so the other other sorts of hardware we would have on LANs would be for example printers which connect drivers um, required for each printer um, sorry the correct drivers are required for each printer should I say so it's important that when they're set up that they're set up properly with the correct software um, and as such it's possible for everybody on a local area network to get access to a printer and that's one of the advantages of a local area printer rather than sort of an individual workstation setup because it means that um, everybody can use a single printer rather than having sort of multiple printers um, all over the place. 
So backup devices would include things like magnetic tape, remo removable disk drives, and optical disk drives. And things, you know, these sort of backup devices which are removable are actually something which in some industries are quite important. Um, for example, if you had a, I, I did some work in the milk industry in the past, and you know, it could be quite a hostile environment. So sometimes when things are getting, um, you know, hosed down and so on, um, basically, you know, there, there is always a danger of, of um, data getting destroyed. So it's important to make a, a backup of that. And sometimes removing it from a more hostile area can be quite important. So one of, one of these things, an uninterruptible power supply now has been a godsend for many people over the years. Um, these are kind of very well engineered at this stage. So they protect against power spikes or power downs. So that's always a possibility. I mean, power spikes on electricity, um, you know, input it, it can cause all sorts of glitches within computer systems. But uninterruptible power supplies basically regulate those and they make sure that um, power is very much smooth as far as the network is concerned. Okay, so network operating system. That's a specific operating system. We mentioned, for example, Novell uh, Netware um, in a previous slide, for example. And this interacts with application software and computers' own operating systems. So the server software acts as an application when executing client requests, functions on data link networks, and application layers. Um, client software versions are required for different computers and carries out functions of data link and network layers. Network profiles are set up for each computer's and user. So the network operating systems provide uh, directory services for resources on LAN. Um, they can also act as a domain name server, um, DNS server. So the LAN architecture, LANs vary with respect to their topology and their media access control. The topology is basic geometric layout of the network, the way computers on the network are interconnected. So the logical topology is how the network works conceptually. We'll show you what this looks like in a minute. Um, the physical topology is how the network is physically installed. So the media access control is how messages are passed through the network. And Ethernet is the most common local area network technology in use today, standardized as, now I expect you all to remember this one, IEEE 802.3. Okay, so if you don't understand all that, don't worry about it, um, because basically this is a diagram of what things look like. Um, you can have a one-to-one -one LAN architecture, which is just one computer connected to another. Um, a bus would be typical, typically that it goes along a different line and you have different stops on both sides of the road, as it were. Um, a ring, um, ring would be sort of a circular um, network which basically goes obviously round and round and so packets would keep running round and round uh, to the various different computers. And a hub um, based on a star, sorry, a star, a star hub as I would have known of them in, in the past is basically that from a single hub it, it sort of goes out to all the different computers um, one by one directly. So shared Ethernet is viewed logically as a bus topology and remember the bus if we can go back a slide here the bus is the one um, on the top right of the slide there. Um, all messages from any computer flow onto the central cable which is the bus so a computer receives messages from all other computers, whether the message is intended for it or not. When a frame is received by a computer, the first task is to read the frame's destination address to see if the message is meant, um, is meant for it or not. Now just give me one second. Um, I'm just looking. I'm racing through this actually. I'm delighted. I'm <coughs> not actually looking at, at the students sort of up at the top row or in the middle row. I'm um, at, just looking at slides, so I'm able to race through this. Um, I hope that I'm not uh, going too fast for any of you. Um, just to say, I'll have another look at the questions now, just in case anybody has asked any questions. It's important to see that. So no comments. 
um, in the um, YouTube section. No comments that I can see. I'll just um, refresh that. Sorry, just to make sure. No, nobody's put any comments in. You're more than welcome to email me, or um, I can I can talk to you by Skype or whatever if anyone has any questions on this and finds it a bit difficult to understand. Okay, so back to the slides. Okay, we're on to shared Ethernet, and it looks like all is going well in terms of the live stream. I was a little bit worried that the um, live stream would would um, possibly break down because obviously when we've got into connect, you know, internet connections, there's always a danger of um, internet going down. So anyway, it, touch wood, it's 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 kept up okay at this stage. So go back to the slideshow. Um, okay, so this beautiful picture here, a shared Ethernet topology. Um, you can see quite clearly um, how how it physically appears, and this is basically a diagrammatic example. But obviously, people will be more familiar with things like the computer labs and so on. Um, you know, which are all connected. Uh, all the computers are connected via networks, and they can be connected to shared drives and printers and so on. Um, Ethernet access control uses a contention-based protocol called CSMA slash CD, which is Carrier Sense Multiple Access or Collision slash Collision Detect. So if medium busy, listen until free, then transmit. That's the way it actually works. So frames can be sent by two computers on the same network at the same time. And each computer must have a sense of whether data is traveling on the media ca carrier. So each computer must have access to the common line and each computer must be able to detect a collision. Packets will collide and destroy each other. So the the network um you know it's it's a very it's a it's a very technical thing, it's a very careful thing, and it, it might seem very transparent to people who use computers in uh, in a network that everything works perfectly easily, but in fact it's it's quite a, a difficult um it's quite a difficult and technical setup to make sure that everything goes smoothly. CSMACD, okay, computer senses cable is free, so sends data. While data is flowing, no other com computer can transmit until it has reached its destination and the cable is free again. So if two machines attempt to transmit at precisely the same time, they will detect a collision and so, so stop. So they send a jamming signal and wait a random time before transmitting. So two computers will basically try to send at precisely the same time. Now, it's, if anybody tries to press two buttons precisely at the same time, it's quite difficult to do so because we're talking about microseconds and milliseconds. But it does happen, and basically this this allows um, this this makes sure that the information will go through. So planning for LAN installations. Planning is critically important with today's LAN expansions. And basically the cheapest point to install the cable is during the construction of a building. So that's modern buildings now. Um, I, I know the engineering building, for example, in NUIG, um, you know, went to great lengths to um, make sure that every different type of cable and so on was properly installed um, when the building was being constructed. So very expensive to add cable to existing buildings because obviously we're talking about ripping up floors or we're talking about knocking down walls. We're talking about um, physical changes um, to, to buildings. So it's logically much more sensible to put cables in, in the first place. So built-in LAN cable plans are similar to power and phone lines. Obviously, the, all communications should be sort of connected um, in, in modern buildings and wiring is closest on each floor with LAN hubs and cables from each room connected to hubs in the closet. So it's it's usual to install 20 to 50% more cable than immediate need for future planning than is necessary, simply to add more hubs. So, I mean, this would be logical that we install a spare capacity just in case um, we need to amend things or alter things later on down the line. 
So bottlenecks, bottlenecks LAN performance is measured as throughput and the total amount of user data transmitted in a given period of time. Um, to improve throughput and LAN performance, we need to identify and eliminate bottlenecks. So potential places are server circuit or client's computer. So as we said, if, if a computer is particularly far away or if a computer is um, you know constantly pushing information through, just like, a, I suppose, a road system, bottlenecks can be caused you know by by a particular device um doing something that will block up the um you know the server so to find the bottleneck we check the server utilization during poor performance so if it's high as in greater than 60 percent then the server is the bottleneck if it's low um less than 40 percent then the network say the circuit is the bottleneck so if it's between 40 percent and 60 percent both the circuit the server and circuits are the bottlenecks. So we can improve performance by upgrading or by segmentation. So constant management of um, the system is very, very important. Now, I've done a good job in getting through this lecture much more quickly than I usually do. Um, so the, the LAN, the, these would be some of the, um, I suppose, this isn't a word cloud, but these would be some of the questions that we um, need to ask in relation to the choice of um, local area network. So the need for speed, the ease of use, how many users and what, what sort of future number of users are we talking about, the number of computers now and in the future, backup and recovery, what sort of security, how many servers will we need, what cabling, broadband, um, to what level do we need broadband? How much data? Um, are there legal issues to do with this? Performance, topology, um, client hardware. How easy to add a workstation? Because it's always important that we give room for expansion. But how physically easy is it? Um, who can do it? That's quite an important thing. Do we have um, you know, the, the correct staff in place to do that? What sort of software um, is used on the network? Um, what operating system are we using? I think that's actually one of the most crucial questions, really. What operating system are we used and how robust is that in terms of the future? What about employee use policies or indeed student use policies in our, in our uh, case? Um, what protocols, Ethernet, token ring, for example, that's a, an example of a ring network. Um, documentation and training. What sort of documentation is there? Who, who needs to be trained in its use? Obviously, most users will see it as a transparent um, sort of a thing, but um, you know, we obviously anybody who manages the network needs to be properly trained and kept up to date because obviously patches and um, you know improvements to any network um, software happen on a regular basis. Um, dedicated servers would be the norm um, in this day and age. So once upon a time, you could use um, individual workstations as, as a server, a joint server and a, a computer. What sort of reliability, vendor reliability and support is there? And what new technologies are coming down the line and the distance between computers? The physical distance is actually an important consideration, um, you know, especially in terms of the cabling. So those are the questions. Um, I'm going to take one last look at the um, at the questions in YouTube. So just if anybody has any questions, feel free to add them afterwards or any comments, um, particularly comments for suggestion. So sorry, there is chat going on. Um, OK. Top chat. OK, so various people chatting down the line. That's great. OK, so. I'm trying to see if there's any questions. Okay, so I don't see any specific questions in YouTube, um, but feel free to um, feel free to put in comments. As I said in the comment section of the YouTube video, and I will return back to you. And thanks for those who've who've at least liked the um, liked the lecture. Um, the final slide is just in relation to what happens next because I think it is quite important for all of us. Um, this week's online labs um, they will be online. I'm afraid the 
university isn't available for people to use. Various people have asked, w could they use the university because they have problems with connectivity? Um, please contact, um, you know, contact your course supervisor and so on. Um, you can contact me if you like, and I'll try and um, help you out if you have problems with connectivity. But obviously, all of you are doing multiple subjects, so um, you know you, you'll need that for everybody, not just for this particular course. But certainly, I'd be delighted to help out anybody who's having difficulty with connectivity, insofar as I can. Um, okay. So anyway, this week in our labs we'll have up to three attempts to do the mcq test and as i said those will be based on three of the lectures that we've done in the past and they um will be fairly straightforward we'll also have the opportunity to look at the various assignments um or to to so you know to to expand on those and um, you should have submitted all your assignments your three three main assignments at this stage so those assignments um obviously i i would ask you to um if you haven't submitted them, please submit them quite urgently and I'll get in touch with you individually to um, sort of highlight those who haven't actually um, submitted one or more of the assignments. Um, but this, this week, basically between 12 noon and 5 p.m., um, we will be giving you the MCQ tests. There'll be three attempts. It'll take about half an hour um, per test. Um, you'll have up to half an hour to answer the, the multiple choice questions. And um, also, our lab assistants will be available. Heike and Ajinka will be available to answer questions. Um, we can also have a look at the, you know, continue to look at um, codepen.io. We did a mock lab test last week, and the format for the lab test, which is worth 25% of the course, um, that will be um, given to you. The, the, the lab test itself will be not this week, but next week and it's important that um, you would sort of get as much familiarity with that as possible. So Heike and Ajinka should be available for questions and we'll send you out on Blackboard information as to how um, you know we can, we can sort of get in touch with the um, lab assistants and myself um, during the week from 12 to 3. Now we're only available from 12 to 3. You can do the, um, you can do the MCQ test up until 5 o'clock uh, next Wednesday. So that's it. Um, very strange here talking to you in this fashion. And, uh, you know, it's it's been an interesting experience. So I hope that um, you've found the, the lecture useful. And I hope that you know a bit more about uh, local area networks after it. And obviously, I'll be posting the, um, this, this, the slides from this lecture uh, online. And you can actually, the, the bonus feature, maybe that's a bonus feature, maybe not, you can look back at this lecture um, online. I'm going to leave it up on YouTube. So anyone who hasn't seen it yet is welcome to have a look at it. Um, obviously, the reg Blackboard registration is now closed. Um, so only those who actually attended um, directly uh, will be registered on that. So anyway, thank you very much. And I hope, you know, stay well, stay safe. And um, good luck with this course and all the rest of the courses. And just to say that this course certainly... Um, I don't ant anticipate that there will be um, many extra difficulties as a result of this um, sort of the university being closed. I think um, it should be quite straightforward uh, to, to get a good grade in this particular course. So thank you very much and thank you for listening. Okay, enjoy your day. Bye now.